A new week is here and like last week it's going to be the end of the week that will be very interesting because last Thursday we had the Fed numbers coming in at 0.75 causing huge movements in the market just as I told you. This week it will also be the Thursday because this Thursday there will be consumer price index number and they will move the market in either direction. There is a consensus that uh, the inflation will show slightly slow down but what if it doesn't. I will argue more uh, about this in the podcast. By the end of the podcast, you will, as usual, have the trading tips. And last week, I had to take a small loss in Meta. But do that mean I think the Meta game is over? No, far from it. I think there is more to be done in Meta. And actually, Meta will again be trading candidate this week. More. And uh, more about that and other information, you are listening to the StockInvest.us podcast for week 45. My name is Jim and stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because at the end of the podcast, you will have this week's trading tips. Welcome to StockInvest.us podcast. We remind you that trading involves a high risk of losing money and that you should speak with a financial advisor before buying or selling any securities. You should not base your investment decision upon StockInvest.us. By using the information provided, you agree and are held liable for your own investment decisions. Last week became a very bad week for Nasdaq, who fell 5.65%. And uh, it was actually just like I said, if you go back to previous podcasts, listen to some of the things I said, I said that that might just be the scenario and it was the end of the week and the Fed increased. And personally, I do not understand why the market is reacting. But as I told you, if the Fed increased the interest rates by 75%, the market could react very negative, even though it was exactly the consensus of what the market thought that the Fed would do. And uh, if you've been listening to this podcast, uh, you know that I've been saying for a very long time that interest rates just has to go up and up because that's the only way to fight inflation. And this week there will be inflation numbers and they will come on Thursday. And if we are lucky, they will show a slowdown in the prices. The reason uh, why they should is because the oil prices has been a little bit lower, uh, still extremely high, but they have been a little bit lower during summer. Had to do with the bins release uh, of oil and a few other things because it's uh, been a little bit hotter uh, several places around the world but now we are heading for winter so don't be fooled if the consumer price index numbers come in uh, better than expected on Thursday because they will go up the same thing with the interest rates it will just continue upwards and I cannot uh, understand how uh, qualified professional people could say early on that the interest rates would go only a little bit up because printing a lot of money the only way (laughs) to fight inflation is to reduce the amount of money in the market so we read that the european union is printing money us is printing money everyone is printing money and still uh, they want to fight inflation increasing interest rates by putting more money into the market it's a bad bad uh, combination The question is, uh, how can you gain from it? What's in it for you? Well, as I told you, this is a very volatile market and it will continue for some more to be volatile. And with volatility come good, good trading opportunities. And by the end of the podcast, I will show you a few trading uh, candidates, which I think will do good. This is the market where I like it the very best because you just have to be a little restricted. You buy when things are very clearly oversold and you get out a little earlier. And for the week ahead of us, I expect the same thing. I expect the markets to be very volatile. We will, as usual, just quickly run through some fundamental things. I'm already uh, way uh, into it. Have a quick look at the charts. Just come to a conclusion. Will it be a red or a green week? And I have the feeling that uh, it will be like last week. Hard to say because things can still go both ways. But as a build-up, I can tell you that now Nasdaq is again 
at that very low uh, level where things can go extremely fast downwards. We are testing uh, 10,500 uh, uh, support. Been doing that uh, many, many times. In some ways, a good sign because if uh, it continues, increases the chances for a breakup. We just need that good situation. And I see in several stocks many, many strong buy signals. Uh, uh, the type of more long-term buy signals. So there are a lot of signs, but it is that walking the line which is so hard because it just takes one or two bad news and everything can collapse and we will get down to Nasdaq around 8000 which was my prediction many 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 months ago so far we stay above uh, and hopefully we will do so I told you uh, consumer price index number is the one thing that you want to watch it is on Thursday during the week there will be some other numbers if I'm not mistaken there will be some numbers uh, today that you can read about but they are not very specific it's the thursday and the consumer price index number that everyone is focusing on of course midterm election is coming up and uh, this will cause a little uh, volatility in the market i have my opinions my political opinions on these things i personally think that the market wants stability and the current government is not able to give that as is the kind of polity the uh, leads have created the scenarios that we see uh, around the world uh, and also then uh, fueled inflation of a few other things and very interesting uh, while talking about these things uh, as you know i love oil i told you it more than a year ago buy all for what you have because that is going to go up and I've uh, recently is telling you over and over again, we're heading for winter. I think it will be energy crisis. I think energy will just continue up. And during the week, Biden actually said that he will again stop all drilling. Hard to say uh, because Biden says uh, many things, uh, but it gives good arguments for what I'm uh, telling you now and I've been telling you for quite some time I think energy prices is going to explode and especially oil will uh, hit hard my target is 200 high I don't know if I will uh, be correct about it but I think we will see a huge rally in oil again and that just means oil shares should still be very attractive there is no reason why oil should suddenly start to collapse the best thing that can happen is that there will be some peace agreement in Ukraine and that can force oil price uh, down. But in general, uh, there is nothing saying that oil should continue, uh, shouldn't continue upwards. And last week it got up uh, $5. It's now currently around 92. And I think it's just a matter of time. You will see it at 100 and then it will just continue slowly upwards. And that gives so many trading opportunities uh, and uh, these trading opportunities is not so much about the percentage upside as I told you we are in a market where things can go very very bad and one of the things that you want to do is have a diversified uh, portfolio where some of your stocks hold low risk and uh, even though uh, even though uh, like tech companies have been hammered during the last year and you may think that now they are super cheap. They still hold huge risk because these companies uh, is in the type of market where things change very fast. Just see how the ad market suddenly disappeared as companies are starting to save money because of inflation and the forthcoming uh, recession and all of these things. The companies are not spending as much money on advertising, social media dumping like crazy. And it can get much, much worse than this. This is absolutely nothing. There is a huge downside for tech companies. Oil, on the other hand, should hold very good, uh, very strong, and they will keep paying dividends. Enough argument for oil. You know that um, oil that I keep a good oil portfolio myself. I've been recommending oil since 20, just saying buy for whatever you can. And I still think it's a huge upside in oil. The other thing that I like to mention is the gold and the gold was up $37 last week around 2% up to $1,676. I'm very bullish to gold. I think gold will go to $2,500 but a very strong dollar is holding the gold uh, down. 
The first thing uh, for gold to go up is uh, dollar to weaken a little bit, but the dollar will stay strong as long as uh, they keep uh, pushing the war agenda around the world. Uh, the gold uh, and the sorry the dollar should remain strong, but at the same time it is very very high. Uh, we will see uh, uh, that will be one of the first things that will make gold move. In addition to this, if you follow gold news, and I hope very soon to do a podcast uh, with an expert with gold to share with you to give you deeper insight in gold. There are a lot of things happening in the gold. I read some articles that uh, many of the banks are again buying gold. And we know that uh, China and Russia are uh, trying to uh, connect gold to their currencies. So there is many good things speaking for gold. How can you trade it? Well, you can trade gold uh, directly. Uh, you can do like I did more than a year ago. I bought gold as uh, security against inflation and has held quite good up. Being in uh, Vilnius, Lithuania, I'm original Norwegian, but living and running a company here in Vilnius. Vilnius and Lithuania have seen 25% inflation. So one fourth uh, of the money is gone in inflation. And you can see it everywhere, restaurants, uh, food prices everywhere, how much prices has gone up. So the investment into gold was to give uh, that security. And I think gold has much more to give. The last thing uh, before we head over to the more technical part uh, is the 10 year treasury. I told you as long as this keep going up, you can expect the market to go down. And as market went down last week, 10 year treasury will go up. It's currently at 415. And uh, it seems like a, a very long time and a huge joke ago when you heard Yellen and all these others say that the 10 year treasury yield wouldn't pass more than two before turning down. Now we're at four. And I say it again, I think it will continue upwards. That uh, is uh, the fundamental things. Uh, as I tell you, is the uh, Thursday's number. The rest is more or less energy is starting to move a little bit up, just as we expect. In addition to this, there is that Ukraine war that can th uh, change things suddenly. Taiwan uh, and huge conflicts with China, as I said, will most likely come up in 2023. In addition to this, there is brewing a lot of other conflicts. Sadly, this has to do with the weaponizing of the world, that huge conflict which uh, is right now, and the agenda of pushing more weapons will not end well, uh, but also mean that there is money to be made in uh, Lockheed Martin and all these weapon companies, as I argued more than a year ago. That's also where you want to have your money. So there are things to do, even though Nasdaq keep falling. And just to say that, Nasdaq is currently at 10,475, so around 10,500, let's say that, support between 10.3 and 10.5. We are there, and that is the thing that we will look at. Dow Jones did a little bit better last week, ending the week at 32,403, falling 1.4%. Oh, a very last thing uh, before quickly running through the technicals, there will be earnings this week. I think it will be Thursday that Sumerica will have their earnings result, and as you know, Sumerica is in the trading portfolio. Very exciting to see how that goes. In addition to this, there are a few things that you can look at if you are a gamer, if you're young and you love games, then uh, a few of the gaming companies will uh, release results. Activision will be uh, today. And I think I saw one more during the week. The other thing, uh, and uh, two interactive software uh, will also be. In addition to this, there is uh, uh, electric vehicle and as you know i told you last week i believe that uh, there is a good upside for electric vehicle and we even got into Muln and neo and uh, neo but very well and for those who still stays in neo i've seen more than 30 percent uh, upside last week so huge gains in neo but neo will release uh, their um, quarter results number i believe it will be on Thursday, yes, it will be on Thursday, will Neo come? Before that, uh, you will have uh, Lucid Group uh, on uh, Tuesday, tomorrow. 
and the Rivian the motor will be on Wednesday. This will give us an insight uh, into how electric vehicles are doing, but as we know, the future is green. We have to get away from uh, fossil fuel. Slowly, we will just go that way. Which company will it be? Will it be Tesla? Will it be Neo? Will it be Lee? Will it be Rivian? Who knows? Uh, I just think that there is an upside that we will see bets into this these kind of companies. Uh, tomorrow will also be uh, Occidental Petroleum, uh, which Warren Buffett is very eager to. But again, oil uh, seems uh, very steady to me. You will just see good gains and there will be dividends, etc. I don't think there will be any really special. Last company to mention uh, is uh, Beyond Meat. Uh, on Wednesday, it's a very special company that it is too risky to play, but has a potential huge upside beyond meat. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, is making this vegan meat. Uh, actually, not meat as we know it. It's uh, special made uh, vegan food. And uh, this uh, wokeness that has been ruling the Western Hemisphere for a long time is far from over. And there is a huge market for this. Does this mean that there might be uh, finally, as Nasdaq is getting close to a bottom, that Beyond Meat can start to move? Don't know. Very interesting company. You can check it out uh, for yourself. I will have a, a look at it myself a little bit later and might get back to it. But let us wrap it up. What can we expect for the week of, uh, ahead of us? So you heard that they said that Thursday will be inflation numbers. This can scare the market. In addition to this, I like to look at the number of buy and sell signals. And as I argued last week, for instance, for New York Stock Exchange was very high. It was 39% buy signals, and usually this indicate a downturn. Same with Nasdaq, that was 31. First, uh, let's look at all buy signals across the world. And right now, from more than 20, uh, 26,000 tickers that is qualified for these analyses, we find that 29% are giving buy signals. That is starting to get very high. And uh, again, I'm sorry if you heard me say this many times before, how does this work? Well, when there is a lot of buy signals, usually two things happen. You see uh, volatility start to increase. You see more uh, and sudden upside when things are high like this, they can go into something we call overbought where things run very, very fast. So it's not only negative being this high because it means that we can suddenly have like three extremely green weeks uh, and you may forget all about the huge downturn because they are so strong. At the same time, it is the place where things suddenly can flip. There, there is just a small thing and these things flip and you will have heavy red. 29% buy signals uh, across all stocks is, in my opinion, starting to get very high. It's not especially high, but it has the place where we have to start uh, to consider different things. And the things that you can consider, since I'm trying to teach you a few things in this podcast, our aim is to help you reduce your losses, increase your gains, and uh, increasing gains. How can you increase your gains? Well, we know market will be volatile, meaning that as it is volatile with a potential huge upside for some stocks, you should take some higher risk in some stock, but you cannot do it on all because it's the market where things really can crash. If, uh, and uh, just to make more argument and logic to this, uh, as you know, when market was very high, I started to sell out uh, most of my shares. I got down to a very low percentage of shares because I expected market to fall. I didn't get that last upswing. I lost uh, a huge part of it, but, I saved so much when the downturn came and Nasdaq just been falling and falling and falling and I've been very low. Now, as Nasdaq is at a potential bottom, I see the opportunity to increase a little bit uh, of the risk. I've been playing a few more stocks lately than I uh, have. In addition to this, I take a few positions into uh, some high risk stocks because if they kick off, there will be a huge payoff. But this is a very risky game. You can, of course, wait until market uh, turns, depends on your uh, risk positions, that you have very significant proof that the market has turned. But usually then, that huge, huge profit is up. So one of the ways to increase your gains uh, is to, of course, take a little better, uh, a little more chance into some of the high-risk 
place. You can use a lot of lists to find these stocks. Oversold on relative strength index is one of them, a very good one. And uh, you can use fundamental lists if you know that. Just remember that fundamental is more a long-term game, while technical anal analysis is good for short-term game. But let's get back to Nasdaq. Nasdaq is 23% buy signal, down from 31 last week, and it was an awful week for Nasdaq, as you know. New York Stock Exchange, 39 uh, last week, down to 34% this week, still high in my opinion. London increased from 19 to 26, Tokyo from uh, 22 down to 19, but Chess in China increased drastically from 7 all the way up to 45. I haven't studied what uh, happened, uh, but uh, a lot of stocks turned into buy signals. Sometimes this is quite natural because when you have this very, very oversold position, suddenly everything flips and the stock flipped. And of course, from sell uh, to buy when things are oversold. So from the signals, we can say that the market is uh, still, I would say, on the upper end with potential for a downturn. It's not an obvious buy. At the same time, it, as I said, when they are as high as this, they can go Higher. Let's uh, quickly look uh, at um, the chart. And if you're listening to this uh, podcast uh, on audio, I will try to explain what I see like I did last time. And uh, again, uh, I feel like I'm uh, totally in love with technical analysis because, that, as I told you last week, Nasdaq is within a very uh, tight falling trend. And usually, usually it sticks within the trend. But I argued that uh, the short-term buy signal, there was a short-term buy signal from moving averages. They were about to cross each other to give a cross, and they did. But hitting the roof of the trend, downturn, now it has flipped to a major sell signal from the relation between these two. Relative strength index was also high, so all the technical indicators saying that uh, there was more to a downside than an upside was correct. Uh, and that heavy, heavy thing of trend. Stay tuned. There is a, a, a saying among us technical analysts, let the trend be your friend. It's the strongest indicator you have. So it's a good choice to be in uh, uprising trends, not trying to fight falling trends. It's called trying to uh, catch a falling knife, playing that falling uh, trend game. At the same time, if you want these very huge profits, sometimes you have to look at the falling trends. You have to look at those who shows the sign of breaking out. And looking at the chart now, and uh, if you are listening on audio, not looking at YouTube, because this uh, podcast is also available on YouTube. What you will see is that the stock, uh, the uh, index, is again at that very, very low. Last time it was 10,300 and 71 i believe uh, last bottom before going up to 11,000. now it is again there and if you look at the right hand side you see some gray bars this is accumulated volume at different levels you will see there is no under today's level and that is very very scary because it means if we break down below 10,003, you can expect huge fall it will go very very fast being in the middle of the trend is where it will again test uh, upwards. And as I said, we are just at that position where things can go both ways. Relative strength index is falling down after being at uh, some 60. It's now at 46. Neither high, neither low can easily turn upwards from here or continue down until uh, it is oversold. And uh, before giving you uh, the conclusion, relative strength index is a very, very easy tool. If you never ever heard about technical analysis and if you've just been playing uh, stocks on random, have a quick look at relative strength index. It is shown in the chart uh, here. There is a small graph underneath and you will see the relative strength index and there are some pivot tops. But usually when the, it's oversold, meaning that the relative strength index is under 30, you can expect market to go up or if it's above 70 to go down. It works very well. Just check out your favorite stock. Do it at our webpage, stockinvest.us. Type in the ticker, see your chart. Uh, we even color the market. You can see Nasdaq back in uh, 
August, around uh, August 12th, we uh, printed into the chart a red line on the price line, meaning that the systems are finding the index to be overbought, ready for downturn. That was many thousand uh, points ago, because at that point Nasdaq was at 13,000 points now, currently 10,300. For a week as such, we are heading for the trading papers, but for a week as such, again, I just have to say that I really don't know. I've been uh, feeling that I've been uh, wrong last. The only thing I've been right about last two weeks is that it can go both ways. And it's so hard if I say it will go down, it might go up. If I say it will go down, uh, sorry, up, it might go down. You cannot draw any real conclusion because it is where things are. We are in the middle of the trend. The trend is very, very solid. Uh, everything is indicating that we should push for uh, downturn. And again, at the same time, the market is really testing some possible bottoms. So trying to make that conclusion, I will do this. I will look at the long-term chart. And if we look at the long-term chart, we can see exactly what I say, that we are showing signs of bottoming out. We are in the lower part uh, of that trend. For a week as such, I think, I think it will be a lot of movements up and down. And uh, it's so hard to say, it's so hard to say. It will be pure guessing where we will where we will head this week. On the upside, plenty of resistance, so any upturn should be uh, slow, facing a lot of resistance around 10,800, for instance. I think we are heading for a red week. That will be the conclusion. Hopefully I'm very, very wrong. Hopefully we will bounce up from 10,300, start to push upwards, and we will have some few uh, very good weeks ahead. Uh, but even though saying it will be a red week, I think there is plenty of stocks to make money in, and I will tell you which one I will bet on now, because now it's time for the trading tips. So we are at the trading tips, the one section that most love. Last week I told you I would be very happy for any comment, and any likes as an incentive to keep doing the podcast, which I've been doing now for almost three years coming up. I'm very thankful for the nice comments, really appreciate it. Uh, currently it's around 1000 people listening to this podcast across various media and uh, it's hardly worth uh, the time but it has become a passion for me to try help you in your trading as best as i can because i know many of you uh, will do are doing the mistakes i don't i've been trading since 96 i had periods where i haven't traded that uh, much but i have done the mistakes a lot of them and i still continue despite having traded this long uh, continue to do slight mistakes. Was buying Meta last week a mistake? It turned out uh, that it was in the very short uh, term picture. I will tell you exactly why. And I can also tell you that I think that for those who still sit, I think that you will be in huge profit very, very soon. I told you last week we had five trading candidates uh, up last week. We had uh, Sumerica going, uh, Chevron was open from uh, the, uh, the week before. Uh, two uh, was open and we got into, I recommended Neo and Meta. And uh, here come uh, a few clues, because uh, if you got into NEO on Monday, you were in for a very, 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 very good week. I could have been too, but I follow some rules, causing the profit in NEO to be less than it really could. For those who really know that on Friday, NEO went up more than 70%, and most likely it's just going to continue up at least first part of this week. But uh, before talking more uh, about that, uh, I've been running this podcast for uh, three years now. And I know, as I said, uh, doing the mistakes. And one of the mistakes uh, you do uh, is not using stop loss. 
And I mentioned NEO on the uh, reason because NEO was cut by stop loss. I managed to do 3.98% profit. I'm so happy about that. I bought NEO at 9.55. It went up uh, above uh, 10 something uh, using trailing stop loss uh, and 5%. That became uh, the limit. So when it started to fall, it was cut on 9.93. And by the end of the week, I just had to see Neo going very fast, 11 something uh, ending on Friday. So I could have been in for a huge, huge uh, profit in Neo. But at the same time, this will not happen all the time. And that's one of the lessons I really learned over all these years. Sometimes you forget all the times when things go wrong, you remember the, the, uh, the times when they went uh, correct. Or let's say in this case, so you remember that, oh, if I just stayed in NEO, I would have made 30% profit, not 4% profit. But I uh, keep track of all my trades. Uh, I know exactly what they do. I sometimes write a small commentary. Why did I buy that stock? What was the reasoning why? So I can try to learn uh, from my mistakes. And seeing again and again, overall, stop loss will fail in a few instances. It will do exactly like this. Cut Neo, Neo fall a little bit more than just continue upwards. Yes, it will happen. But at the same time, I cannot count how many times stop loss saved me from future losses. And that uh, is one of the things that most of new traders uh, lose their money is you go into a stock that you are somewhat in love with or you read at reddit or for some other reason and you just follow it down 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 you're not able to get out of the stock it's become emotional and you think that it will turn the next day will be the day that it turns up it has huge potential and instead of reading all news you only start to read the positive news you select out the things that doesn't fit you so stop loss i cannot keep repeating use stop loss and uh, that is the best thing that you as a new trader along with trying to get a strategy can do. And I told you I uh, think it will be a volatile week. I think it will be a week with opportunities. So the stocks I picked for today has some of that mentality. So Last week, uh, Sumerica, as you know, is uh, running open. We bought it back in week 34, 26 cents. And as I told you, this is one stock I will not put the stop loss on because it can go anyways. Didn't change much during the week. It was up at some 23, 24 cents, but then fell down to 22.45. So it's currently still sitting with a loss in the portfolio. But Thursday will be uh, numbers from... Um, Sumerica will be very interesting to see how it goes. And as I argued, I think that it's a good company. It's uh, doing ped, uh, PET medications and uh, PET scannings. You know, a very PET related company has a huge amount of money in the bank, uh, which makes me think that there is an upside as the risk for bankruptcy, etc. is very low at current level or even need for more money, which is another situation that is coming up in these markets where you will see companies do two things. Company that makes a lot of money, they will start buying back the shares and company who really desperately need money, they uh, will start to uh, offer shares for sale. So if you are in one of these tech companies or many of the tech companies, do not be surprised if they suddenly start uh, diluting shares because it's the only way to get in money when you cannot get it in organically. So, uh, Sumerica, no big changes, stay in the portfolio. Then there was two, which we bought in week 43. 1288 uh, and last week continue upwards, uh, hit a top, then uh, fell down, was cut by stop loss. I have a huge stop loss, 5%. Uh, so I could have had 5% more uh, if I was in. But as I said, it's uh, very time consuming to sit uh, following the market from minute to minute. So it's very seldom I do that. I just put the trailing stop loss. 5% loss for two. And when it fell from that top around 14 something uh, and it fell down to 13.87, it was sold 7.69% profit. So that last green week continues to be green. 
Then there was Chevron bought also in week 43 and was a trading tips last week as well. $172 it was bought on, just continue up and even with stop loss and some movements during week it was not able to be sell, uh, sold. Currently at 183.42, up 6.58%, still remains in the portfolio. Sumerica and Chevron is now the two stocks that I have in this podcast portfolio, which I release every Monday. And I try to trade them uh, during uh, the Monday, uh, just as I say. And I keep them during the week, put on some stop losses, and I tell you the following week how it went. I will do the same thing today. Try to get in as cheap as I uh, can. And usually, usually this is some 30, 40 minutes after opening. Uh, that's a usual thing. The other thing I use, that's one of the things I use. The other thing I use is looking at the trend of the stock because it's very steady downwards. I wait until I see signs of upturn, usually meaning that I see two intraday bottoms going up. Then uh, we bought uh, NEO. I got in at NEO 955. It was much lower than that. I didn't get the best price for NEO, but was very happy to see NEO going up. And I think it was Tuesday, it went above 10 something. Had a 5% trailing stop loss. Then we had a huge bad red day, causing NEO to fall. Uh, down to 9.50, but it was caught on stop loss at 9.93, giving 3.98% profit. And on Friday, it skyrocketed 11.50, or something, and today I think it will just continue upwards. So NEO, if you are in NEO, if you followed my tips for NEO last week, still stay there. Congratulations on a super profit. Very happy if you were able to squeeze in on that one, squeeze in on that one. Meta, however, I got in at ne uh, Meta at uh, 94.5, and excuse me if I use a little time on Meta today, because I will argue for many things. I bought NEO 94.50, uh, everything was looking good, it went up to 97 something, and then started uh, to fall, and had a very, very bad day, it was down at 88 or something. Cut off stop loss, 92.62, giving a loss of 1.99%, so my Meta trade was bust at minus nine, uh, 1.99%. Meta, uh, as I told you, Meta has a strong cash flow, but they also spend a lot of money. And uh, being, in my opinion, very oversold because they only need to, to do a little bit of cost structure, laying off people, restructuring a little bit less money into that new meta universe, and they will get investor confidence back. And there should be a huge, huge upside uh, for meta in the short term picture. I'm not saying in long term because uh, 10 years, meta may very well be gone. Uh, there is nothing to say that Meta should still remain that huge company. They have to come up with new products. They have to uh, go through reorganization. It's the life, uh, uh, the cycle of business. Same goes for Meta like for everyone else. They have to come up with something new. That is why they are into this Meta universe. So there is still plenty of downside, but on the short term, I still think there is huge profit in Meta. That argues for why Meta will, again, I will try to buy Meta today and see if I can scoop up because I think there is a good, good upside in Meta. So Meta is one of the trading tips for today. The other trading tips I will do is XPEV. I like the things I see in XPEV. It will be a risky trade. Uh, but it uh, looks to me like it has a potential a huge upside. So I will try uh, Meta, I will do XPEV, and one stock that we did uh, in week 43, Moon, if you remember, we bought Moon at 47 cents, sold at 57, almost 58 cents, giving 20, almost 23% profit. I'll try Moon again. I Moon is very low right now. I think it can do a small comeback. Huge, huge risk, extreme risk, but we will try it. So for the week, it will be XPEV, it will be Meta, and it will be Muln. Along with this, uh, I have uh, Chevron open and Sumerica open, so I will be in five stocks, which I usually isn't. But as I told you, this is the place where things can go very fast uh, upwards. And 
if uh, I'm wrong, I have stop loss on all of these. One day I will uh, show you absolutely all trades done. But those following me know that it's been red and red. We're doing Chevron. We did Chevron back in week 39, doing 14%. Uh, it's green of the green of the green, a few weeks of red. But all of them has one common thing. They have been reduced by stop losses. So as an end note, I will head for some quick lunch then uh, uh, start uh, sending the stuff for rendering and uh, publish uh, this so you have it before uh, markets open today stop loss stop loss stop loss read up about it uh, there is many different uh, types of stop loss uh, fixed stop loss trailing stop loss etc some of it might look a little confusing the first time you use it but once you understand it, it is fairly easy to use. Some uh, struggle a little bit what about trigger price, limit price, what does these things mean? In most cases, almost every broker, limit price is the price where the stock will be sold. It's the last place where it will be sold. And trigger price is just where it will start to sell. And usually you then set, for instance, let's say that you do try Meta today, uh, and you say that if meta falls below 90 again, it will go very bad. So you usually s doesn't put exactly on 90. You set your stop loss, for instance, at uh, let's say uh, 89.30. Uh, and you put your trigger price at 89.50. So when the stock gets to 89.50, uh, it starts to uh, sell your stock and it stops at... 89.50. If uh, the stock for some reason fall uh, below your limit price, the stock will not be sold. It's one of these things, limitations of stop loss. There are some limitations and sometimes the stock open lower uh, than open price or it's being paused for some news and then trading remains after limit price. So there are a few things about stock loss, but you can read more about it. I had a very, very good week last week uh, and uh, hopefully this will be an extremely good week uh, as well, not only by stock trading, but in general. As I told you, I like uh, metal detecting, found a lot of very nice coins last week using these last few days of fall before it's getting too cold and the ground will be too hard. We are here to make money. Hopefully we will make uh, money this week as well. It will be a ugly week. Uh, above all and everything I hope you will have a very good week keep repeating it uh, as an end note in my podcast there is more to uh, life than stock trading try to grab a coffee with a friend find a hobby uh, read a book uh, enjoy life and if you're lucky next week when we will speak there will be more green until then have a perfect week bye